In this video I'm going to go over the basic operation of the prop jammer and demonstrate how to record a trigger sequence. At first I'm not going to use any audio tracks just to show the basic operation of the prop jammer and how the recording process works. My basic setup consists of a 12 volt power supply and a small speaker powered by the prop jammers onboard mini amp. I don't have any loads connected as we're just going to use the prop jammers LEDs to show what's going on. So let's power up the unit. Once the prop jammer initializes, you'll notice that the mode LED pulses at a rate of once per second. We call this pulse the heartbeat, and it indicates that the prop jammer is in idle mode. When the prop jammer is in idle mode, it's waiting on one of two things to happen. Either a trigger signal or for you to change the operating mode. In this demonstration, we're going to set the prop jammer to record mode and record a trigger sequence. To put the prop jammer in record mode, we have to press the record button twice. The first press initiates the record mode, but still gives you a way out in case you pressed it by accident or you simply changed your mind. Pressing any of the other buttons will bring you back to idle mode without recording anything. So let's give that a try. We press the record button to initiate the record mode, and by pressing any other button will bring you back to idle mode, as you can see by the heartbeat. Pressing the record button the second time commits to the record mode. At this point, the prop jammer will do a three count using the mode LED to give you a cue as to when to start recording your button sequence. We call this count on three. So the mode LED will flash three times, and on the third flash, the prop jammer will start recording whatever you do on the four channel buttons. So let's give this a try. Press the button once to initiate and then press it again and on the third flash the prop jammer will start recording whatever buttons I press on the four channel buttons. To stop recording I press the record button again. The prop jammer will then copy my sequence to the memory and go back to the idle mode as indicated by the heartbeat. So let's try that again press record button twice, once to initiate and a second time to commit on three we start recording my sequence hit record to stop and we're back in idle mode so now we want to play back our recorded sequence we need to set the prop jammer from idle mode to trigger mode this can be done in one of two ways either by a trigger signal on the trigger screw terminals or we simply press the trigger button on the board. So now we're playing back exactly what we just recorded. There's our sequence and then we go back to idle mode. Just for fun let's do that one more time. Press record to initiate, press it again to commit, on three start recording, record to stop, and then we can press our trigger button to see what we just recorded. And the unit goes back to idle mode. Now let's see how this works using audio, but first we have to remove the power from the board. I've already copied a trigger and ambient audio track to my micro SD card, so I'm going to go ahead and insert that card into the prop jammer and you don't want to do this while it's powered up so now I'm going to power the board back up and you'll hear the ambient track playing while the prop jammer is in idle mode as you can see by the heartbeat in idle mode you can set the volume of your audio tracks by pressing the volume up and volume down buttons This setting is automatically saved to memory, so the next time you power up the prop jammer, it will recall what your last volume setting was. It might be hard to come across on video, but the onboard mini amp can actually get quite loud. I'm going to turn it up here. And it can be used for smaller standalone displays. Yeah, it can get pretty loud. So if you want, you can use this for a standalone display where you don't need a large external amp. So let's turn that down just a bit. 
Let's go ahead and trigger the sequence we just recorded earlier. You can see that when the prop jammer is triggered, the recorded trigger sequence along with the trigger audio track will play. Once it's done, the unit goes back to idle mode and the ambient track will begin to play again. And back to idle mode. So now let's record a new trigger sequence using audio, but this time I'm going to try to synchronize my button presses to the trigger audio track. So we hit the record button twice, and then on three, record sequence, hit stop, and then the prop jammer goes back to idle mode. So now if we hit the trigger, we can see what we just recorded. Alright, easy enough. Your trigger sequence can be as short as you want and is not dependent on the length of your trigger audio track. It is dependent on when you stop your sequence recording by pressing the record button. You can continue to record button presses even after your triggered audio track ends. The maximum total length of the trigger sequence on a stock prop jammer is 6 minutes and 45 seconds. So as you can see it's really easy to record your trigger sequence and you can do it as many times as you want to get it exactly the way you like. Thanks for watching.